Alrighty then, back once again for another reaction. This time it's Ruby, Volume 6, Chapter 8, Dead End. Uh, but I was going to call it a rest. I was going to give it a rest after Chapter 7, because I've started getting a little bit heat fatigue. But, but, it then reoccurred to me that based on certain thumbnails of an angry John I've seen, this episode, this chapter, might be the one where John finds out, well, obviously, the remaining members of Team Juniper find out the truth about Ozpin's backstory and knowing nothing about how to defeat Salem. Uh, which should be a doozy, considering it was worthy enough to be put in the intro. So I'm thinking I can't stop right now. My compulsion to view and press on means I need to see this before I pack things up. So that's what we're going to do. Dead end. Now, we had it teased um, with the apathy chapter. But what if John just quits? What if John bounces? He's done. Like, well, I came here looking for a way to avenge Pira and, like, nothing. I, I came to do the right thing and it turns out we're just putting off the inevitable as well. Like, fuck this. Fuck you. I'm done. Like, I, I can see it. I could see that happening. Like, John just giving up. Like, but in the most angry, explosive, petulant way possible. I could, it, it might happen. This is his dead end. Like, that's it. That's the last straw. Like, no. I won't do this. Oh. Of course, I'm going to look foolish if this isn't what happened, but still, I'm thinking what dead end could mean. Is it like the dead end of Oscar's journey? Is John going to get him kicked out of the group, blaming him despite him not having anything to do with it? Like, will he be like, oh, I don't believe you, you're talking as Ozpin right now, kind of thing. And you don't know what irrational people will say when they're angry. Like, you know, when you're angry, you get irrational. Like, oh, I'm worried. I'm worried for Oscar, because the poor bean hasn't done anything. And he was the one getting roughed up by Jean in the opening. Oh, well. We're going to jump into the deep end, plug our noses and dive straight into the cold pool. Let's go. Let's go. Come on! You didn't even hear us out! Our orders are clear. Well, this could be the a dead end. The Atlas border is closed. Please, have a good day. But... A good day! Hey, if you don't want to believe that I'm friends with Ironwood... General Ironwood! These guys. General Ironwood. Then fine. But look, we have Weiss Schnee with us, and we're trying to get her home safely. Approach! <laughs> of course, the Schnee name is very powerful. Your father wants you back. So he can punish you. Very well. You may speak with our commanding officer. We will fetch her at once. Is it winter? <laughs> I, I bet it won't be. They were kind of super weird. <laughs> they remind me of the kind of guards you see in a game like Beyond Good and Evil. Well, I may know this commanding officer. That's good, isn't it? If she's your friend, then maybe she'd be more willing to help us. I wouldn't exactly call us. No, no, no the Cockney girl that I killed was her sister. Quite. Colleagues? Former? Enemies? That's the one. Wait. What's <laughs> yes, I come through here about once every ten years to get my eyes checked up in Atlas. You bring outside cashews on one flight, and suddenly you're placed on the additional screening list for life. You've got to be kidding me. Now, now, let's Maria not give is up hope wonderful. Yet. Maybe she's dead. Maria! Maria, please, stop. 
stop. You can't just barge in. You can't just barge in in the space of one volume and try to become my all-time favorite character. You can't be doing this. Stop it. Please. You look like a bitch. Witch. She-devil. Hmm. I see you've chosen larger contraband to smuggle this time. Oh, Cordo. You know, they say time changes people. But I see you've still got that stick right up. Oh, Miss, uh, uh Maria, please. Uh, my name is Ruby Rose, and I was wondering if you would hear us out about... I've already heard what your other little friends had to say. Miss Rose. What are you doing back here? I thought I told you to leave. Uh, and I told you we wouldn't rest until you let us go. Nice to see you again as well. You civilians are clearly incapable of comprehending the importance of our mission here in Argus. So allow me to say Oh, how, how ironic. You have no idea about the importance of anything these girls have been doing. That relay tower, the very safety of Argus are all gifts from the glorious kingdom of Atlas. And it is my Wow, duty you to need to be torn down I from this place that you're in. If for such a task. Such wit! Such tenacity! Or maybe Atlas just wanted to get you as far from the kingdom as possible. Uh, You're just like the rest of these Argus. <laughs> these two also remind me this of those gods from Undertale. For our Elysian ancestors, and what do we get in return? The entire world is ready to put a knife to our throats. Please, we know your kingdom had nothing to do with the fall of Beacon, but we were there. No one's happy about the Atlas borders or embargo. But I know General Ironwood is just worried. It's why we need to talk the to The General is no coward. Atlas is strong. Oh, the Wise is like, I heard so much of this so talk from my father. Atlas will prevail. Atlas will prevail. Do you guys seriously have to do that? If Mishni has truly come to her senses and wishes to return to her family, then of course the Atlas military will escort her home. But the kingdom will not be responsible for her friends of questionable character. What's that supposed to mean? It means we're done here. Ooh, oh, they picked up on that. Ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah? Well, you're no, 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 no. Like a big dumb boot. Way to show her, Nora. <laughs> Wow, I loved how they picked up on the racism there. That was a great I told subtle you touch. We wouldn't leave your side for a second. We'll find a way to Atlas together. Hmm. So, where are we going now? Yeah, what's the plan? The plan? The plan just got shut on our face three times over. I'm going for a drink. Bye. Uncle Crow, I really think we should try and come up with something together. What's his problem? It's not your fault we can't go on. If he's oh, be a you jerk, need to know. We come up with something without him. I mean, we've got Ozpin with us. He usually knows what to do. You've got to. What is it? You've got to. John. Everything we did was for nothing. That's not true. Really? Because it sure does sound like it. I am... If Salem can't be killed, then how are we supposed to win this? Wow. Great plan, everyone. Look, none of this is great, we know. But we're not the bad guys here. Are we sure about that? Here what? comes the doubt. He's in your head, isn't he? Did you already know about this? He didn't know any of it. <laughs> How much longer can we even try? There's the him? intro. John! How do we even know it's really him? What if we've been talking to that liar this whole time? John! Hey, I said that. I said he might think that. This was the understandable reaction, though. Is he gonna be okay? I don't know! 
I think it would be best if we had some time to ourselves. Yeah, they have always been Nora aside, the more serious team. Maybe we could. And they're the all ones use who lost space. a member. Remember, they're the ones who have a a, a lot of. I know everyone else is grief over Pira, but it's kind of on another level when it's your teammate. And as close as Pira and John were. Like, this is totally understandable. Uh, Where are you? They'll be feeling really personal betrayal because of Pira. Here to avoid the yelling. Sorry. The others went to get food for tonight. Why not go with them? I don't know. It must be extra hard anything. for a positive being like Ruby to be what around such negativity. This team when we don't even have a plan. The crow's out drinking. Osman hasn't come back, and even if he did, I don't know if I could trust him. And there's always Jin, but we only have one more question we can ask her. I feel like I'm letting everyone down. You know, you don't give yourself enough credit. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. That wasn't a compliment. Uh, what? If I have to explain it to you, it'll just defeat the purpose. But if you're tired of not knowing anything, how about we discuss those eyes of yours? Yes. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Honored. She was waiting Sit for you to ask. For Pete's sake. Let's start with what you do know. Tell me. Uh... Silver-eyed people are supposed to be legendary warriors, or something. And at the fall of Beacon, I turned a giant wyvern into stone. Oh boy. Look, if I already knew everything, I wouldn't be asking for help. Yelling. It's not your fault. I had my father to teach me. And even he didn't have Yes, yeah, hereditary. Answers. But what he told me makes sense, given what I've seen. Are you a secret grandma? Are you Ruby's too? grandma? <laughs> it wasn't really an official title back in his day. I only knew him as an old soldier and an excellent teacher. I never attended one of those fancy academies of yours, but I scored higher on the license exam than any other huntsman or huntress that day. Because you were destined to lead the life of a warrior. Proud. That's how it was for it Ruby. She was good enough to be accepted two years ahead of schedule. It, it all checks He's out. We've never been able to find much information about our abilities. Just legends of warriors whose eyes shone like mirrors, reflecting the light of the world onto darkness. He found so little, in fact, that it made him cautious. How could such powerful bloodlines Very be so pretty. rare? Unless... Something was actively seeking to destroy them. Salem. I tried to keep my powers a secret. I wonder how many of Ruby's know, ancestors have been enough. slayed by Salem. I really owe sad. I my life to my training and my semblance. At the end of the day, those are still your most powerful tools. What is your semblance? <laughs> Preflexes. A silly name I came up with. Hard to explain, but I can sense everything better than most and react to attacks almost before they happen. So observation hacky in one training, piece terms. And secret ability to turn grim to stone, or blind them, or vaporize them. <clears throat> and that's how you become the Grim Reaper. So. How do I laser beam monsters with my eyeballs? <laughs> that is what every fan <laughs> wants answering. That. I want you to think of all the times you've triggered your powers. What did those moments have in common? Someone was about to die. I was scared and stressed. Is it emotional? Like unlocking a semblance? It's emotional, but more focused than that. Think. What is it you wanted? To protect... I wanted to protect my friends. Precisely. It is the desire to preserve life which fuels the light inside you. 
no which is why it's the it antithesis of the thing that wants to destroy. Preservation is an extension of creation, or at the very least, an enemy of destruction. Yes, thank you. The creatures of Grimm were made by the god of darkness, but your light comes from his brother. Yes. How do you know that? I always knew how to use the light, but never why it only worked on the Grimm. Then Jin showed us her vision. Yeah, that Boy, filled in a lot of blanks. <laughs> yeah, that was the same light as the silver eyes. The god of light. His you eyes. are God's children. <laughs> okay. Where do we start? Well, not here. Yeah, where's the, the Grim? Only work in the presence of Grim. Meaning the only practice you'll get will be a trial by fire. But what you can do is focus on creating a state of mind that you can tap into when you need it. Don't think about your light as a oh, means that of is a good shot. evil, but as a way to protect the people of Remnant. Yes. But that can't be right. Hmm? You said the light only reacts to Grim, but I used it during our battle at Haven. It reacted to Cinder. Well, Grimma. Interesting. Perhaps there was something that you just weren't seeing? Ruby! Yeah, under a sleeve. Oh, hey, guys. What's going on? It's Oscar. He's missing. Has Ozpin assumed control again and ran away? Or... Oh, no. I did think, didn't I? Like, aside from Sean, I thought, could this be Oscar's dead end? But, like, in the context I was thinking of was that Jean ran him out, something that he'd regret later. But, n no. Oh, wow. It was Oscar's dead end. Like, he probably feels the hopelessness more than anyone. We already saw it straight after the flashback. He was like, I'm just going to be another one of his lives. Shit. Like, I think he's lost his hope. He, ne he needs to be brought back around. Like, both of them are off somewhere in a slump right now. And they're in danger. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. So... Silver Eyes development. Awesome. Maria. Awesome. Becoming one of my favorite characters at such a rapid pace that it's making my eyes spin. Wow, 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 wow. Some believable rage from Team the remains of Team Juniper. Uh, as I said, fueled by the grief of Pyrrha. <laughs> Maria dispensing this advice and pretty much confirming what the majority consensus was that oh you know it works against the grim because it's a force of light I really like that she sort of knew something was going on but only had it confirmed by watching that flashback like it really filled in the blanks for her that 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 was a good way to tie that in like oh yeah it all makes sense now like and I saw him use it. <laughs> but holy smokes. Can you believe that they're talking so openly and directly about the Silver Rise and stuff? Can you believe that? Like, considering how Ty was like, oh, there's other things to talk about. Let's not discuss that right now. And how it was being brought up as this like big power of you like oh people aren't happy that you have this like you better watch your back and like then it didn't get another mention throughout volume four and then only appeared again briefly in a in the haven fight in volume five people were beginning to wonder like are we ever going to address this is this just going to be forever something that pops in and out when convenient to ruby as sort of a lazy tool a lazy writing tool and then Volume 6 comes along, gives her a straight up freaking master to learn from, and all of a sudden she's learning how to conjure it, and she's basically being told, you'll find out if you can the next time you face a Grimm. Like, 
you know, trial by fire. See if you can bring it out. Oh, I really hope she can bring it out. I mean, fair enough, show her failing a couple of times, but I want her to win her next fight by activating the silver eyes by complete control. Oh. Rob, I've got to give some applause for the fact that we are actually addressing it. That we are actually trying to make forward baby steps with it. Now, I don't know where this Oscar plot's going to go. Uh, they'll have to find him and bring him back somehow. I'm wondering if he will unite with Crow because he's off on his own and they will make up individually and then make their way back to the main group. That might be a good way to go about this. Like, have them reconcile and that helps them both get to a better place again. It'll bring Crow out of his depression and it'll bring Ozpin back into being confident enough to talk and then they can all meet up again and apologize before the volume's over hopefully or this is going in a completely different direction and the wheels of ruby keep turning in their majestic way i don't know i don't know oh. uh i do know one thing though that lady is a total bitch the the gatekeeper lady i'm not going to bother remembering her name because she's a racist <laughs> I'm like that. I, oh. Ruby has gotten so good at adding subtle character touches to the interactions and stuff. Did you see the way she like looked around at all of them and then scowled when she, when her eyes met Blake, and then made a specific comment about content of character? Like that was exactly the same as what Weiss used to say. Like, oh, that filthy faunus from the boat. Those faunus only know how to lie, cheat, and steal. It, it's a very commonly held belief in Atlas, especially in the military and stuff, because of all the uh, White Fang raids on their trains and stuff, like like the Schnee Dust Company. So Weiss has been around that kind of attitude her whole life, and it's like, oh, that must have been so ugly to recognize. That's why they're like, excuse me? Oh, oh. That was such a powerful thing for them to notice that right away and question it, even though this ignorant lady was never going to acknowledge their acknowledgement. Oh, you see, it's subtle things like this that really show how far Ruby's come. Like, this volume is probably already my favorite. Just because of how everything has been perfectly in place so far, especially for me. Like, I enjoyed this show. Like, I don't think I've ever had too bad of a thing to say about it. I've always been pretty positive. But this volume, even by my own low, 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 low standards, is blowing me away. Like, I don't know. You, I, I have, like, an equilibrium where my standards are low, yeah. But it still takes a lot to truly wow, wow me. This volume is wow category so far. I, I can't believe how well we've been doing on all fronts, firing on all cylinders. And I can tell we're not done yet. We, we are so not done yet. There's still, what, a good six chapters to go? If there, is, Are there 14 or are there 13? I don't know. Either way, I'm looking forward to them. Very much looking forward to them. And I shall see you guys next time. <laughs>